Chapter 8, Mary Douglas's Typology of Grid and Group. The theoretical framework is typology of grid and group. The um, field of study uh, or di is discipline is social anthropology, and the focus of study is school culture. An overview of the study, um, they describe it as the use of a theoretical framework that has significantly influenced the depth and integration of Mr. Harris's teaching, research, and service activities. Within Chapter 8, he discusses some of those benefits and boundaries, as well as the evolution of his understanding and use of Mary Douglas's typology of grid and group analysis in qualitative inquiry. The purpose of the study was to explain cult school culture in terms of grid and group and to determine the frameworks of applicability to educational settings. The central research questions of the study included how can a social context be suitably interpreted, explained, and compared with other contexts, and how effective is Douglas's typology in accomplishing those tasks. The methodology and methods, uh, much of the data collection and analysis for this particular um, study on typology. It, it occurred from 1989 to 1993 prior to Harris even discovering Douglas's grid and group work. Harris and his grad students conducted qualitative research using either grounded theory approach or there was just no particular formalized theory at all. The data gathered through qualitative strategies included interviews, observations, and document analysis. For the original explorations, constant comparison methodology, as outlined in Lincoln and Guba's uh, Naturalistic Inquiry, was used in data analysis. Harris discovered Mary Douglas's work in 1993. At this point, he began using her typology of grid and group to explain, um, of grid and group to provide a new lens in which to review and analyze the data from his existing data sets and narratives. Harris's considerations for classification included how are rules and role expectations defined, and how are activities and objectives directed, and how are values and norms manifested. Harris went on to use his three consideration criteria for classification, um, grid and group dimensions, and Douglas's four prototypes within his fresh, uh, within his fresh lens to re-examine existing data sets and narratives. So he used his old data sets and brought them to life again uh, with a fresh perspective by using Douglas's grid and group. Uh, theoretical framework. A detailed description of Douglas's typology theoretical framework, um, it, it helps educators meet conceptual and methodological challenges inherent in cultural inquiry and educational practice. The grid and group is useful as it provides a matrix to classify a school context. It draws specific observations about individuals, values, beliefs, and behavior. Um, it's designed to take into account the total social environment as well as interrelationships among school members and their context, as well as explains how constructed contextual meanings are generated and transformed. The theory helps bring order to experience and provides a common language to explain behaviors and interactionism in a school setting. According to the typology, one might find himself or herself in one of four and only four distinctive cultural contexts. There are two dynamic prototypes, grid and group, and uh, d that define each of those four cultural prototypes. The grid and group follows a continuum from strong to weak, and at the strong end of the grid continuum, roles and rules dominate the environment and explicit institutional classifications regulate personal interaction 
and restrain individual autonomy. Now the four cultural prototypes include individualist, um, it goes from weak grid, weak group, that would be individualist, um, bureaucratic, it would be strong grid and weak group, corporate, which is strong grid, strong group, and collectivist, which is weak grid, strong group. So remember, it's built on a continuum with um, the two dynamic dimensions, with the continuum going back and forth, with, and then you've got the four prototypes, cultural prototypes. The contributing author, Ed Harris, goes on to share more detail within Chapter 8 about each of those four prototypes within the grid and group. And uh, he talks more about how he discovered Douglas and the grid and group framework and his quest for comprehending the various complexities of school culture. He also shares the effects of the theoretical framework on the research, his initial reluctance about it, using it, and then the strengths and weaknesses of grid and group analysis and his utilization of yet another theoretical framework, which is Wallace's typology for re revitalization movements. And that's chapter 8.